Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. The biggest and the most celebrated event in the cloud native space is KubeCon. But is KubeCon really worth that hype? Is it worth attending KubeCon in person by registering for the event? As someone who has participated in KubeCon in the past, I would like to share my personal experience, genuine feedback about the event. And if you are wondering why am I making this video at this point of time, every time when there is KubeCon happening at any part of the world, I keep getting messages on LinkedIn, comments on the YouTube channel asking, is KubeCon worth attending? Should I register for KubeCon? I have already registered for KubeCon, how to make best out of the event. And finally, Abhishek, are you attending the event? And now that there is a KubeCon that is happening in Salt Lake City, that is in the US, second week of November, to be precise, 12th of November, again, I started getting the same comments, same messages on LinkedIn. I thought I will make one dedicated video once for all answering all of these questions make sure you watch this video till the end it is very informative let me answer this question straightforward in a nutshell is kubecon worth attending yes yes and big yes if you are a subscriber of this channel if you are following my content for some time now you already know that I'm a big endorser of communities and I'm an open source enthusiast. KubeCon has the biggest community in the cloud native space. Apart from that, from my past experience, there are few things that really impress me about KubeCon. The first thing is the quality of the speakers. You can look at the past events of KubeCon. They have schedule on their websites, the Linux Foundation. For KubeCon, the process of CFPs, call for papers, is really very tough. Like, personally, I have submitted three CFPs, I mean, different times, and two times it got rejected, one time the CFP went through. So, thousands of people submit the CFPs, even more than that, and principal engineers, distinguished engineers from the companies, VPs, directors, they put their ideas into the CFPs, the panel, the persons who are reviewing the CFPs from CNCF, Linux Foundation. So they take literally months to review each and every CFP and shortly some tens of CFPs. So you can understand the quality of the presentations, the quality of the speakers that would pass through this CFP review process. And if you look at the past events, if you look at the speaker details or the presentations that are happening, even at the Salt Lake City, that is on 12th of November, you can understand what type of content you can see at the KubeCon. The second thing, and this is my favorite, is networking. So if you attend KubeCon, so this happens typically for three to four days and you can find thousands of like-minded people or at least people who are in the same community. If you are a DevOps engineer, site reliability engineer, platform engineer, you can find thousands of other DevOps engineers, SRE engineers, platform engineers working in different companies. It can be startups, it can be MNCs. They come up with different challenges, different problems. So you can interact with them, understand what type of problems they are seeing, how did they solve those problems. And most importantly, you can also get to know about career opportunities. I think KubeCon is a place where a lot of career opportunities gets exchanged and a lot of people from those leads also go to the interviews. So networking is very, very key thing, even something that KubeCon promotes very well. 
So that is the second thing that I've noticed. And apart from that, you can also attend full day events. So KubeCon has this thing called as co-located events. I'm not sure how many of you know it, but they have something called co-located events. When you take KubeCon pass or when you register for KubeCon, there is another thing called as all access registration or all access pass. And if you take that along with KubeCon, you can also attend co-located events such as ArgoCon, Observability Day, Istio Day. So these will be one full day events where you will get to see the labs, you will get to see some boot camps, you will get to see some, you know, demos about these products. For example, you can go to ArgoCon, which is a co-located event at the Salt Lake City. So if you go to KubeCon, there is also ArgoCon and one full day of Argo, you can learn about Argo, you can learn what are the capabilities about it. Similarly, Observability Day, there is something called as Istio Day and multiple others. So co-located events are one of the best things. I think I can say that you will get most if you take the KubeCon pass along with these co-located events. But you cannot take only a co-located day pass. You need to take both of them together if you want to attend the co-located events. And finally, great swags. So a lot of sponsors for the KubeCon. So KubeCon has multiple sponsors and all of them, they have their booths. So they demo their product, they explain their product to the people who are attending KubeCon. And you can go to the booths, you can spend some time, you can understand the product and you can collect the cool swag that they're giving away if you spend some time with their product. So that way you can go to multiple booths and you can get different kinds of swags. But the most important thing is this is a four day event and a lot of people get lost in the event. So some of them get sponsored by their companies. So KubeCon has that where you can get sponsorship from your company and you can attend the event or you can take an individual pass. If you are a student, that is much better. You can get the KubeCon pass for discounted price. I think some $200. But the problem is that many of them get lost in this three to four day event because if you look at the schedule of KubeCon, so there are hundreds of sessions at KubeCon and there are multiple booths. The KubeCon event happens at a very large place. So one thing that I would recommend is if you are attending KubeCon, make sure you spend at least three to four hours on the schedule. Decide upon a track. For example, if your focus is SRA engineering, pick up the items like observability, pick up items like the SRE practices. So you will find multiple sessions and pick the sessions. Keep a note that on day one, I'm going to attend these sessions. I'm going to attend these labs. I'm going to attend these panel discussions. And that note that you prepare will be very handy at your KubeCon. Personally, this will be my most useful advice if you are attending KubeCon. And finally, something that many people don't know is KubeCon also does a lot of sponsorships. Let's say that you lost your job recently or let's say you cannot afford the passes at KubeCon because of the job related issues. You can also write a mail to them and you can get passes, but it is first come and first serve. So you can try your luck. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you want to register for KubeCon, the link is in the description. I have provided the Salt Lake City event. By clicking on that, you can register to the event. See you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.